What's up gamers and collectors, DGC back with another original Xbox video and today is going to be part one of a three-part series for the original Xbox focusing on exclusive racing games. So let's check it out. Okay, so first up we have Apex from Atari. This is a racing game on a grand scale. It has a ton of tracks from cities and real-world racetracks. The amount of cars to choose from is unreal. It's all based on early 2000s era cars, which is good for me and OG Xbox fans alike, as these are cars we grew up wanting to own as kids. The game handles well. Steering feels very arcadey in a good way. This game can be found cheap and available at most retro game stores. The thing I liked most about this game was that the AI is done well, to where you would just have fun playing the game. Out of all the games that I'm showing today, this is the one I couldn't put down. Next up, we have another exclusive from Atari on the OG Xbox. Back in the 90s and 2000s, kart racers were a dime a dozen, and Xbox knew that it needed at least one on its platform. Yeah, this isn't Mario Kart or Crash Team Racing, but you gotta look past that. This can be had super cheap, and it's jam-packed with content for the price. It's Mario Kart meets Road Rash. Most of the maps are city-type levels. It has a good variety of power-ups that can be used, and again, the AI in this game is killer in a good way. They keep you on your toes. I often come back to this and wonder why it doesn't get more attention. This is a good example of a good OG Xbox party game to own. You won't go wrong with this one. Group S Challenge by Capcom as well. Not great, but not terrible either. The first time I picked this game up, I got all excited with the Porsche, Tokyo Drifting on the cover. Then I found out it had 50 plus licensed cars and tracks. Overall, the game looks decent enough for the time period that it came out. Depending on what car you're driving, the game is fun. What I mean by that is the cheaper cars are very fun to drive, while the expensive ones aren't very fun to drive in this game for whatever reason. Maybe it's just me, but the game is kind of a meh, and that's a shame, because it had all the great ingredients for a great racer on the Xbox. Ah, now this next one is something special of a driving game on the original Xbox, Maximum Chase. I'm hesitant to call this one a racing game. Well, it is, but with a twist. Imagine Walter Jr. from Breaking Bad. Yeah, well now he's grown up and still strange. It's got a cheap B-movie feel to the story. That's not a bad thing. If anything, it makes it worth playing just for a good laugh. Visually, the game has not aged that well, but the cinematic cutscenes are very reminiscent of the Sega CD era, so if that's a thing you're into, this has you written all over it. Some of the levels are light gun, railgun style. That's why I said the game has a twist. On Metacritic, it's clear that when this game came out, it bombed pretty hard. But overall, it's a short experience. So I'm going to say for a fiver, you can't go wrong with this one. Check it out. Top Gear RPM Tuning. Now, out of all of the original Xbox racing games, this has to be the worst of them all. This might even be one of the worst racing games I've ever played in my life, period. This game really has nothing to redeem itself. The visuals, not great. The soundtrack, not great. The sound effect of the actual vehicles, not great. The levels, not great. Just pretty much everything about this game is really bloody awful. Chemco, what were you thinking when you developed Top Gear RPM tuning for the original Xbox? This game really just has no redeeming factors. If you happen to see this, steer clear of this one. Do not waste your money on this one. Alright, I take that back. At least it has a sick Euro beat. Any initial D fans in my subscribers? Alright, so next up we have Pulse Racer for the original Xbox. This game has a true sense of speed to it. I'm talking, you feel like you're actually going fast when, the, when you're racing. Now, the game otherwise has a very generic level design. There's really not a whole lot going on. The, the scenery of it looks cool, but the actual level itself, there's no hills or jumps or traps or that kind of thing. Um, the power-ups are very sparse. The music is kind of a mess. I gotta be honest with you, even though this game is incredibly cheap, I really don't recommend wasting your money on it. It's really not that good of a game, so steer clear of Pulse Racer for the Xbox. Monster 4x4 World Circuit by Ubisoft for the original Xbox. Now, this cover might look familiar to you because it actually later came out on the Wii, where it was actually more suited because of the childish nature of this game. However, don't overlook this game. I actually had quite a bit of fun while playing and recording this, and it is really quite a spectacular monster truck game. It's got Mini Coopers, school buses, trash trucks, actual monster trucks, 
it's got all sorts of stuff. It's got snow levels, it's got tropical levels, it's got desert levels, it's got circus levels. It's got all sorts of stuff to suit your needs for a good racing game. You can do jumps and tricks and power-ups and boosting and the AI in this game is really pretty competitive but not enough to where it aggravates you and it really is quite a great racing game to, to have. Now this one is a little bit harder to find for the Xbox so if you do have to get it for the Wii it's still basically the same game but you are going to have to deal with motion controls on that. But during its generation this was exclusive to the original Xbox. So check it out if you happen to find this one. Alright, so next up we have Room Zoom Race for Impact. Now, if you're already a subscriber, you would know that I talked about this in my Rare Hidden Gems Xbox video a few weeks back. With that being said, I couldn't miss an opportunity to talk about it again. This is a great game for the original Xbox. Wonderful Hot Wheels style kart racing game. Great little four player uh, couch game with you and some friends. Absolutely great uh, level design very childish looking uh, kind of playroom kind of thing and the power-ups are very uh, very fun to use not overkill like blue turtle shells and that kind of stuff but you know rockets and oil slicks and your basic little power-ups that you would get in a kart racer and it's not over the top the levels are really cool they kind of have like um, traps and moving things in them and and different different angles of approach to the level and that kind of thing it really is quite a fun little racing game and I definitely recommend this one so pick it up if you happen to find it alright so next up we have Midtown Madness 3 now as you can see on the cover it's got the Mini Cooper this was right when Italian Job came out so that was the Mini Cooper was kind of the cool it car back in the early 2000s when they relaunched the brand now with that being said there's a wide variety of cars in there you got Volkswagens, Corvettes, Mini Coopers trash trucks, taxi cars, you name it. They've got all sorts of vehicles in this game that you can drive. A bunch of different modes that you can actually race in, whether it be time lapse, free roam, or just a multitude of different racing styles that you can play in this game. The cars handle pretty well. It's it's graphically pretty well. It does do 480p, so it, it looks pretty, pretty crispy on the uh, old TV there. And uh, I actually had quite a blast with this game. You can find this pretty much every game store. I guarantee you, you've all picked it up and then put it back down. And for five, ten bucks, it's really a good racing game, and you can't go wrong with this one. So I definitely recommend picking up Midtown Madness 3 for the original Xbox. Alright guys, last but not least is Quantum Redshift for the original Xbox. This came out about a year after the launch, and it was a competitor to Wipeout for the PlayStation and F-Zero for the Nintendo consoles alike. This is a hyper-realistic future racing game. Now, it's got a great variety of levels to it. The visuals are really good. The uh, music composer is a well-known music composer now, does a lot of movies and that kind of stuff. Now, the game has not aged graphically the best, but it still looks pretty good and has a good little charm to it. This is a franchise that I'd really like to see Microsoft reach back into the, into the cellar and bring this one into the future and give it some new life. This is a cool game and it really would do well on the, on the Xbox platform now with like maybe 16 racers on Xbox Live being able to play this or even if they just updated this one with the 1X or Series X enhancements and then somehow added online play into it. I really think it would do well either with a new one or a uh, custom remake of the Xbox original version on the newer consoles. It really is a fantastic racing game and I saved it for last because this is a game that often gets overlooked by a lot of Xbox players who don't really know about much racing games on the original Xbox and it really is truly something that should be in your collection. Alright guys, so that was 10 exclusive racers for the original Xbox. This is the first part of a three-part series, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already to catch the next two parts. Now if you only have a little bit of money and you can only buy a couple of games for your OG Xbox, which are the three that I would recommend out of these 10? Well, first up, Furious Karting. Great little multiplayer kart racer, kind of cool uh, city levels, that kind of thing. And a really very fun multiplayer game. I used to play this with my cousin a good bit, so definitely recommend that one. Now, if you really want a good sense of speed, kind of feel a little nostalgic for F-Zero, and you want some sense of speed, since Nintendo's clearly never going to fill that niche for us, uh, Pulse Racer. I actually opened this one up sealed. Still got the little sticker there. Um, really, really good sense of speed with this game. And the track generator, very nice touch. It's not as in-depth as something like Far Cry, where you can make the maps and that kind of thing, but it... It's still a nice touch and, and, and kind of creates a little difference from your average racer. Now the last one I'd really recommend here is Room Zoom Race for Impact. This was in my recent uh, Rare Hidden Gems for the Xbox video. 
really fantastic little Hot Wheels type style um, kart racer kind of thing. Uh, it looks really crappy, but it is a very fun game. Get some friends just like with Furious Karting and you'll have a blast with this game. Or even just playing it single player, it really is a fun little kart racer. So that's going to do it for part one of this series, guys. Be sure to hit that like button for me, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out for now. Come here, you mother...